The Vikings beat Christopher Columbus to the Americas by 471 years, and a massive solar storm helped to prove it. Here's what you need to know. A massive solar storm has helped prove the Vikings had crossed the Atlantic Ocean and settled in Canada by AD 1021, according to a study in the journal Nature. Scientists already knew the solar storm occurred between AD 992 and 993 and was able to use a technique that measures increases in atmospheric radiocarbon concentration to correlate its impact on trees at the Lanzo Meadows site on Newfoundland's northern peninsula with later Viking activity. The study reanalyzed wood excavated from the site in the 1960s, which had been cut using metal Viking tools, otherwise unknown in North America at that point. It found distinctive marks in the tree rings from the solar storm, plus 28 annual growth rings formed after those marks. Adding 28 years to AD 993 showed Vikings had to have been cutting those trees in the year AD 1021, which means they arrived in the Americas 471 years before Christopher Columbus, according to The Guardian. Having established a presence in Iceland and Greenland before arriving at the Lanzo Meadows site, the Vikings likely traveled west to gather new raw materials, most notably wood, according to the study's lead author. As such, the study corroborates two Icelandic sagas, the Saga of the Greenlanders and the Saga of Eric the Red, which outline how the Vikings first settled in Greenland and then North America. It also adds to our growing knowledge of the Vikings' globe-trotting tendencies, confirming that they would have interacted with Native Americans, while a study earlier this year found artifacts from as far away as Iraq and Turkey in an ancient Icelandic site, which suggested they would also have interacted with Arabic people. The story of how those artifacts ended up being preserved is a great example of why the imaginations of both researchers and the general public are so animated by Vikings. Researchers theorize the effects of a cataclysmic eruption could have been deeply unsettling for the Vikings, and after the lava cooled, they entered a cave and constructed a boat-shaped structure out of rocks, where they burned animal bones at high temperatures as a sacrifice. This may have been done to appease Surtur, a giant who Vikings believed would kill the last of the gods in the Battle of Ragnarok and then engulf the world in flames. Or another possibility is that the burnt offerings were meant to strengthen Freyr, a Viking fertility god, in the hopes that he could defeat Surtur and stop the fiery end of the world. These are pretty cool stories and are, importantly, enough to fire researchers towards new methods of finding out more about these all-time great storytellers. Measuring solar storms is the most recent example of this, but not the first. In 2018, for instance, experts from the Norwegian Institute for Cultural Heritage Research found a complex Viking ship burial site at Jellested in southeastern Norway without actually digging down to find the site and study its many parts. According to a research article the team published in the journal Antiquity, the researchers used a giant ground-penetrating radar to analyze the ground deep under the surface of a field. The radar pulses an electromagnetic energy signal that can penetrate deep into soil. The radar antenna has a transmitter that sends out the signal and a receiver that receives the energy waves that bounce back. A processing unit then analyzes the physics of the bounce back signal to create a clear image of the types of materials that are located under the ground. In this way, researchers found one of the cool Viking stories they were looking for. The undisturbed site contains many buildings and, crucially, a longboat buried long ago as part of the funeral of a tribal leader to ensure safe passage into the afterlife. Legend speaks of the sons of Ragnar, they and their Viking rage. Upon hearing of their father's death in England, they went mad with grief. Legend has it they raised a great heathen army and journeyed across the ocean seeking revenge. Ragnar's boys numbered five in total. Uba, Eva, Bjorn, Sigurd, and Halfdan. All men, all warriors, all legends in their own right. But those are tales we shall come to later. Now, spectators of myth, we chronicle the brood of Ragnar and their vengeance. Viking Vengeance, Brood of Ragnar In the summer of 865 or 866, Ragnar's sons and their massive Viking army waged war against the English. The tomes do not tell of how many of Ragnar's sons traveled to the kingdom of Northumbria, but they do bleed with their victims' cries. From the last days of summer to the first days of fall, the Vikings battled their way across the English lands. Village after village and soldier after soldier fell to the heathen horde. 
by the winter, the sons have brought large swathes of English land under their control. King Ayla was fighting a losing battle. And soon, the sons of Ragnar had arrived at the city of York. The Vikings soon captured that as well and got their hands on King Ayla. What happened next is hard to tell. Some say that the Englishman was slaughtered there and then. Others say he was executed by a method known as the Blood Eagle and left to rot. We dare not show you this spectators of myth, except to say that it spreads both sides of the back as if they were an eagle's wings. Legend has it, the Blood Eagle was a sacrifice to the Allfather, and he, if anything, is a most blood-hungry god. Ragnar Lothbrok, the Viking conqueror of Nordic myth. Legend does not speak of Ragnar, it yells. From the lands of Sweden and Denmark to France and Britain, Ragnar's battle cry was heard across the ocean and beyond. Prince, father, warrior, husband, adulterer, pirate, king, bandit, viking. Ragnar was all these and more. And to this day, many wonder, did this man live one life or many? Days of Ragnar. Some believe Ragnar wasn't a single man at all, but a mixture of other legends of the age. It is said that he was born the son of a Swedish king, and his name is believed to mean Hairy Breeches. Funny as that may be, legend has it that he was granted the title while slaying a dragon. Ragnar was by no means the first Viking to raid and plunder foreign shores, but some say he was the first to make a home there. If, as some suspect, the Viking Ragnar was Ragnar, then one of his conquests was in western France. Eventually, the tones say, Ragnar captured Paris as well. But he didn't stop there. The man is also said to have battled his way across the ocean to England. There, he raided and plundered Northumbria and Wessex. But it was also there the man known as Ragnar met his demise. He was captured by Ayla, the king of Northumbria. The Englishman sentenced Ragnar to death and had him thrown into a pit of snakes. And so the Viking king was no more. Yet his revenge he would get. Ragnar's sons were mad with grief and they decided to pay a little visit to the kingdom of Northumbria. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.